the three categories of WRB. WRB stands for Water Resistive Barrier, and it's the term the building code uses for the water control membrane used in drained walls. Drained walls are the most common type of walls in North American construction, and it's important to remember that these walls work not because they include a water control membrane, they work because the components form a system that manages water. The water control membrane is just one element of that system. There's also a cladding that sheds water and a space between the cladding and the water control membrane for drainage and drying. That space is really important. The drainage part is fairly obvious, but we shouldn't underestimate the drying part. The cladding will dry into that space, but the rest of the wall will also dry into that space when it gets wet. But back to the WRB, there are three categories of water control membrane. They are mechanically attached membranes, fully adhered or fluid applied membranes, and integral sheathing plus water and air control materials. The most important thing to know about mechanically attached membranes is that they are mechanically attached. And this means one, that they're not fully bonded to the substrate underneath and two, that water and air can and do get behind them. These two points are particularly relevant when it comes to understanding how to detail these types of membrane. And unfortunately, this is an area where useful technical information is at odds with the marketing messages of the people who sell these kinds of membranes. Mechanically attached membranes work very well when paired with a drained and back vented cladding. They typically resist water in the liquid form, but are permeable to water in the vapor form, and this is usually a very desirable characteristic. Some mechanically attached membranes are perforated or woven, and this variety is usually not very good at remaining resistant to water long term, and as you might imagine, these membranes are even more dependent on having a clear space for drainage in front of them to work properly. Mechanically attached membranes can be installed in any weather conditions, there are no temperature restrictions, and they don't need to be protected from water. They should be avoided on tall buildings because they get damaged by high exposure to wind. The membrane will fatigue and uh, tear with repeated fluttering. The fluttering issue tends to be worsened with membranes that have been exposed to copious amounts of UV during construction. The membrane can become more brittle and tear more easily in service. In this photo, you can see that at some parts of the building, the text on the membrane has faded. These parts have been exposed to more sun than the darker parts. So when might you want to use a mechanically attached membrane? When you need solid water management for an architecturally simple building and you're on a tight budget, and perhaps when something else is providing the air control or air control isn't that important. Now when might you not want to use a mechanically attached membrane? When you need the WRB to be an excellent air control membrane, when you need the WRB to provide excellent water control, or when you're designing a tall building. It's really important to understand that these are generalizations though. It's possible to get good air tightness results from mechanically attached membranes, it's just not typical. Remember that when manufacturers test performance, it tends not to be in typical conditions, and the test isn't usually a realistic representation of performance in service. When we pressurize or depressurize a building for a blower door test to look at air tightness, for example, the pressure is constant. This means that the membrane is not exposed to fluttering, which it will experience in real life, but not in the test. Also, in tests of partially completed houses, we often don't have the cladding in place, which will, of course, add a lot more penetrations for fasteners. And in tests of completed houses, it's often the interior drywall that's the de facto air barrier, not the mechanically attached WRB. Now, that's actually okay, right? You may have planned for exactly that. In multifamily buildings, for example, we have a real interest in compartmentalizing each unit, and using the interior drywall is a really economical way of doing just that. We have a bunch of different air barriers exactly where they're most helpful to us. So choosing a WRB that makes the whole building airtight might not be the best use of resources. The second category of WRB is fully adhered and fluid membranes. 
These membranes are fully bonded to the sheathing and as such provide greatly enhanced air control. They are much more intuitive to detail and they're available in varying degrees of permeance. This image is of Polyguard's fully adhered membrane on a house in a warm climate. The thing about fully adhered and fluid membranes is they are more expensive, they have application temperature restrictions, they have to be applied over a relatively clean substrate, and can even require a primer to properly adhere. In the case of fully adhered membranes, they often require special detailing at what are called reverse laps. This is a reverse lap. Usually we need to treat these with a smear seal of sealant along the top edge. This keeps the membrane from peeling away. When it does peel away, we call that a fish mouth. Fish mouths give water a pathway behind the membrane. Now I'd like to point out here that reverse laps are actually not really a big deal. All things being equal, we want to avoid them by shingle lapping the membrane, but it's unrealistic to expect the contractor to sequence the job perfectly such that we don't ever have any reverse laps. Now it really doesn't matter as long as we treat the top edge appropriately. I mention that only because I've come across some professionals who treat reverse laps as this huge indictment against the system. As long as they're detailed properly, you don't need to worry about them. Our third category of WRB is our integral sheathing plus water and air control membranes. The most popular version of this residentially is Huber's zip system. The way this works is a water and air control membrane is applied to the sheathing panels in the factory and the panel joints are sealed in the field. The performance is similar to that of fully adhered and fluid membranes at a substantially reduced cost. The approach is available with both OSB and gypsum sheathings. The one pictured here is Georgia Pacific's DENS element. Now how can you evaluate these integral systems? I ask myself three questions. One, how well does the coating, if there is one, bond to the substrate? So how well does that factory applied coating stay stuck on the sheathing? Two, how well does the tape or fluid seal the joints? And three, how easy is the whole system to install? What's the difference between a typical installation and a perfect installation? And that third point is why I tend to like these systems so much. That delta between perfect installation and typical installation is smaller, I find, than for example, with mechanically attached membranes. But not all of these systems are created equal. If you're considering switching to one of these, I encourage you to spend some time in the field visiting some actual job sites in your area and taking a look for yourself. You can apply these three questions to really any manufacturer's system, and I find it really helpful. Now, unlike fluid applied and self-adhered membranes, we have exposed sheathing fasteners with these integral systems. You could seal these up if you wanted, but I don't think you need to. Most manufacturers will tell you to seal the overdriven fasteners, and obviously you should comply with manufacturer instructions. You could also seal all of them, but again, I don't think you need to. The reason for this is because for water infiltration to be problematic, the wetting a wall experiences must exceed its capacity to store and redistribute water for long enough to damage the materials that compose it. And with a drained and back vented cladding, the water exposure from fasteners is negligible. Now, I'd like to point out that we're only talking about the sheathing fasteners here. The cladding attachment fasteners don't get sealed no matter what type of WRB you're using. So this obsession with these sheathing fasteners is a little silly anyway. Now, there are plenty of reasons to prefer one category of membrane over another and one manufacturer over another, but this isn't one of those reasons. All three of the categories I've discussed with you work and they work well. Every product I've pictured is one that I've personally recommended and there are dozens more products that I haven't shown you that are also terrific. Some other frequently asked questions about these integral systems before we conclude though, um, does the permeance of the tape or fluid used to seal the joints matter? Now, all things being equal, I prefer fluid because it's more permeable to water vapor so we'll get a little bit of drawing at the, at the joints, but in general, not enough surface area is covered by the tape to make a difference either way. So it's perfectly acceptable in any climate to use the tape. What about the tapes being reverse lapped themselves? 
These systems, and indeed most acrylic tapes that aren't part of these systems, are what we call self-terminating, in that the top edge remains bonded to the substrate and won't peel away in service. So these usually don't need to be terminated with sealant the way we need to do with thicker self-adhered membranes. The thing with tapes, all tapes, is that you really have to roll them. It, it really does matter. These tapes are pressure sensitive and to get them to work, they need to be rolled. This is also an example of an integral sheathing plus water and air control material, but this one is one you really ought to avoid. This material is a lot like chipboard, if you remember chipboard from architecture school. This is basically chipboard with a foil facing. The sheets are stapled to the wall and the seams are usually not actually sealed but overlapped. These systems are actually reasonably effective at water and air control where they're usually just unacceptable is in terms of structural strength. If you're an architect or an architect in training, it's unlikely that you'll ever work on a building with this kind of sheathing. And in fact, it's probably the case that you're not even aware that this material even exists. And that's why I'm showing it. The stuff that architects work on is really not representative of everything that's really out there. A lot of homes are built with this stuff. So those are our three categories of WRB the mechanically attached, the fluid and self-adhered, and the integral systems.